You are listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics with a unique perspective. Here's your wild card, Richard Kearney, and your whimsical, Ryan Pulley. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing? I can't complain. Um, It's another one of those weeks. I guess they're back-to-back where it seems way longer than it really is. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't today Friday? (laughs) I wish it was. I mean, I had one of those moments today. I'm walking down the hall at work. And I'm like, oh, God, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> uh, I, I, Man. Yeah. Yeah. If, if this is the way the week's going to go, I, I'd just like to pull the stop cord and get off now. I know that's right. <clears throat> Be like one of those foreign countries that only get the four-day work week and the three-day week. And then, um... <laughs> yeah, but we'd still have seven workday bills. That's true. And they would they would get that 40 hours out of us one way or the other. So one of the greediest ass countries on the planet that I uh, know. That's a topic for another day, maybe. It, it is. It is. But so hey, um I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a, a recap of the news. You know, just something I like to do to just see what's happening in the world and I figure I'd, you know, share it with you. Now, first things first, bro. Trump boasts that Mar-a-Lago was a secure place to keep classified documents despite evidence that it clearly wasn't. Now, I don't know about you, bro, but they wanted to point out to him that they already were aware of his secret stash inside that little slit in the mattress that he keeps at home where he keeps the tanning spray and the bleach. So they were aware. (laughs) Sorry, Trump. You made the opening news on this show. All right. That's about as political as I'm going to get folks for today. However, Wyoming, a GOP lawmaker pushes back on an electric car ban And then says he didn't mean it. Bro. In other news, my child was caught stealing cookies. And then he said he didn't mean it. (laughs) What am I getting here? I mean, why would you put a ban on electric cars anyway? What was his point? Did he say like? What was Uh, the reasoning behind that? We're going to go with stupidity because we don't know the point. And from the ridiculous to the sublime in electric motors, a man plugs in his electric truck and learns that it will take a week to charge. So I'm saying to myself, what happened there? Why are we taking a week to charge? Um, What the hell kind of truck is this? That's what I wanted to know. What kind of truck is it? Because I'm going to steer. RC Toyota. (laughs) Could be. And you know what, though? If it was me, I'd be like, okay, I'm cool with that. Wait till they call me and ask when the payment is coming. <laughs> All right. They'll come tow it with a gas-powered tow truck, too. So I know we're going to get into some, some sports t- uh, in the show. That's, that's our thing, folks. Uh, but I want to talk about Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he revealed today the hilarious thing that one of his linemen said to him. Uh, after the uh, interception against the Chargers. Which one? Uh, it doesn't say which one, but I'm pretty sure the response was the same. The lineman said, no worries. It's the Chargers. They'll find a way to blow it. What happened? Chargers blew it. Chargers charged. That they did. See, that's what I'll say about my team. At least we know at front we're going to lose it. We're not going to you know. I'm sorry. 
I'm getting off into my feelings here. You yeah, asked me not to say anything mean about your Raiders, so I'm not going to even, even though I have a good zippity doodah right there, I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, as long as it's not Tom Brady related. All right. Hey, <laughs> look at that. It's Brett Maher. Okay. He was reportedly shanking his PAT so bad the Cowboys were running out of kicking balls. That's pretty bad. Now, in unrelated news, he shortly after the game, he was seen collecting cash from a notorious mobster known for keeping the point spread low. <laughs> I tell you what, on a side note, uh, after seeing Butker deal with his issues, I'll take Butker missing every other extra point versus getting yeah. this guy. I, I missed guess four straight. It was, was bad, too. I'm just wondering if he couldn't take the spotlight pressure. Well, the first, I, I don't know. I mean, it was just, they're just extra points, so there really is no pressure. I mean, it's not like it was a close game and these kicks were required to win or anything. But That's true. And, and I, uh, I don't believe it was the spotlight because this is a team that plays every year on Thanksgiving. So it's not, true. Like, it's not like the world is not watching you. Yeah, the but his uh, the first three kicks, I think, went, wide left and then the other the last one he overcorrected and it shot to the right or vice versa but yeah it was it was bad and extra points too it's not like they were field goals uh, yeah that is bad it's okay. a sad you know that's one thing about the nfl is the art of kicking isn't what it used to be where there used to be an automatic it's not anymore yeah say what you will about my squad i'm i'm spoiled I went from Sebastian Janikowski to um, uh, what's his name? God, I can't even remember his name. But hey, they're they're accurate. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna close it out here. This is a funny one. Uh, man found out that his girlfriend cheated on him, and then kept it a secret because her therapist told her to. I'm gonna have to go in and read a little bit of this for you just to make sense. A uh, woman had contacted this guy and told him, hey, your girlfriend's cheating on you. He didn't believe it. Your girlfriend's cheating on you. He still didn't believe it. She told him, hey, it's my guy that she's cheating with. I found out. He finally confronted her. Um, and she did. She then told him that her, uh, says here, her therapist advised against it, even though she wanted to tell him. Now, I don't know if the therapist really advised against it or if uh, this is just one of those cases where she got caught red handed and she had that's the only thing she could reach for. But I'm willing to bet you we're going to hear a lot more of these crazy stories from these women out here, because if this flies and a therapist would actually tell you to do that. What else can the world get away with because, quote unquote, their therapist said not to do it? Right. But on the flip side, I mean, what he doesn't know doesn't hurt him, right? Uh, not until he knew it. And then it right. hurt him. <laughs> but she told him, right? Yeah. That's, That's her fault. She was busted. Yeah, you know. I've been like, deny, yeah, deny, I deny. I'm not even going there. I'm not going there. <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing the part of Shaggy. Here we go. All right, gang, that's the news. And we are now going back to our regularly scheduled programming. Show, did you look at that uh, information I sent you on the latest Martin Luther King statue that was, for loosely based terminology, erected? The the embrace. Yes. Yes, I have uh I have seen what you sent me. I have seen all the memes on the internet and read up about it and the the origination from it. But yes. To answer your question in one word, yes. So first of all, it was ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Man. I need to be a statue maker because that artist wasn't dicking around, or was he? Right. Hmm. Well, again, it de it depends on the viewpoint that you look at this statue from. Yeah. 
because it can be interpreted as a bunch of different things. Yeah. Hey, is the hand on the thigh? Is she holding up? What? <laughs> oh, that's just two arms. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not, no pun intended, but I think the artist dropped the ball on this one. Yeah, I, I think the uh, the idea was great. Just maybe not very good execution. <laughs> yeah, because there was no head on that statue. Damn it. Oh, neither one of them. Neither one of them. I, yeah. Um, wow. I mean, I, as an artist, you, you look and double check and look at your own work. He didn't see it. Nobody else saw it. I mean, that's a pretty big but, statue. It's got to be like hauled in somewhere. But we're also looking at it <clears throat> two dimensionally. We're not seeing it in front of us three dimensionally, which might be different. But in the pictures, and it depends on what picture you look at, you get a few different ideas of what you're actually looking at. You know, is that a, you know, was that a, you know, type of mm -hmm. thing? Um, I'm sure think, maybe up. Go ahead. I was going to ask, do you think that maybe it should be altered in some way? No, because I seen a full picture with um, the actual picture of it uh, that they took it from the embrace between uh, Martin Luther King and Coretta, and from the angle of the picture, and if you look at the if you look at the statue correctly, <laughs> it's spot on, and it's pretty cool. Um, again, though. Like I said, if you look at it from a different angle, squint your eyes, yet it's possible that you see something else. It is very possible. Um, but I'm not going to tell you what I see. I'm going to let everybody make their own yeah. determination. Folks, look it up. Judge for yourself. And this would be a great time to leave us some feedback. To let us know what you see. Leave a comment right here on the channel. We appreciate it. Now, from the ridiculous to the sublime, HBO Max has a new cartoon. It's not for kids, but it will ruin most people's childhoods. Velma. A take on, the, yeah, that character from the Scooby-Doo gang. I don't know if you looked at the um, trailer. Mm -hmm. I think the first episode, first and second episode of I think are both out and this show is getting trashed all around. Now, yes, there's some race swapping and there's some sexuality references. I want to know what you think about it. First of all, did you ever watch the original Scooby-Doo? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I, I figured I had to ask, though, you know. That's so, where you learn... As a kid, that the people that hurt you or scare you are normally the ones that you know the best. That's one way to look at it. What I took away from it is they could have got away with it if it wasn't for us crazy kids. <laughs> but, tomato, but, tomato. Yeah. So what do you think about this remake? Not interested. Seen the, seen the uh, previews and just... Just not interested. This is a great thing about streaming services. I don't have to watch it. And there's a thousand other shows on that platform that I can watch besides that. Um, I don't like the fact that technically they only brought three of the original five back. They have a Shaggy substitute, but his name isn't Shaggy. I think it's like and, Noble or something. Right. There is no Scooby-Doo. <laughs> So there's no dog, and that, that was the whole point of the show. Um, they, although the what'd you say his name is Norbert Norval, Norval, I think he is wearing the same clothes as Shaggy wore. Yeah, and he does talk quite a bit about drugs, even though allegedly he doesn't use them. Exactly, uh, but honestly, not interested. That's just not even gonna watch it. Not even gonna entertain it. 
I don't mind if things get changed when things are brought back again. So, you know, race swapping doesn't bother me if it's, you know, for a good reason. I do mind if you just try so hard to make everything different that you've completely taken away that which it was. Um, so what's the point of redoing it, honestly? Well, before these, this these kids, the cartoons that we grew up watching, you know, I know the cartoons are not real people, so I don't need that type of comments on, this, on the page. I get that. But they were kids in a certain era. Mm -hmm. If you're going to bring up new kids in a new era based off the original, come up with new characters. Maybe they're the, the sons and daughters of the original characters. See, or something of that nature. You know, instead of just making it all, okay, we know everybody knows Velma, so we're going to just use her. And you know, no, I, this whole remake and crap is just irritating to me. And see, find, a, next. find a new idea and jump on it. This is Stop like remaking I've always it. said. Uh, <clears throat> Perfect so example, I'm sorry. No, Perfect I'm example so of remake that, that's mm -hmm. coming out and I've seen it. Night Court is coming back. But the flip side is it's the original judge's daughter that's now the judge. Yeah. So it's, it's and it has the same Arquette, ain't that his last name? Larriquette, yeah. John yeah, Larriquette. He's, he's yeah, still he's, the district he's, attorney. He's still the district attorney. So he's the only one that's come back, from what I understand, that's that was from the original, because I'm pretty sure Bull is dead, right? And so was the guard, uh, the other guard the, that the took female his place. Guard, the female guard is dead. Bull is still alive, but he declined to come back in a report okay. that I read earlier. And the judge is dead in real life, Harry, yeah, right? Yeah, he is. So, but the fact that they did it, they're bringing back the show, but here's the little flip you know it's harry's daughter that's now the judge Th that makes it different it's kind of like with roseanne when they you know after she did her stuff and then she went off the deep end and they canceled her they continued the series just called it the connors yeah and you know it's still rolling and you know it's in its fifth season now so mm -hmm. you know old ideas with little tweaks and little changes to update it i'm cool with but completely rebooting and making it pretend like the original crap never happened, it's it's very frustrating to me. Now that's my old man. I'm jumping off the so the, the soapbox now. Your turn, sir. You know what? You're you're not wrong though. A, a, a very good example for me. Very good. One of my favorite TV shows of all time was the remake of Battlestar Galactica. They took the exact same premise, but they modernized it for the 2010s instead of the 1970s and it worked it worked um i know it was it new canceled. characters or old characters it was the same characters um you know, i mean new actors playing the same parts um right so the, there were but they were who they were in the 70s you know whether but they're it, the heroic person the swashbuckler or you know the but they didn't reboot it right they just kind of picked up where they left off just in a newer version like they didn't have to show a new origin story they they did but they didn't there was a mini series that started it that did the origin and from that gotcha. point on everything was fresh and, gotcha. and when i say they modernized it they gave them more problems that would be truer and up to date you know for example back in the 70s you never thought why don't they ever run out of food on there you know they dealt with that in an episode they dealt gotcha. with getting caught by the enemy on an episode. So they, they instead of your monster of the week format, they actually dealt with problems throughout and had an actual story arc. And they had a start and they had a finish for that four year run. And, gotcha. But it was delightful. It was joyful. Another good example, which is episode of the week. I was a big fan of Hawaii Five-0 when they remade it. I believe it came out in 2010 and lasted until 2020. That was my show. You know, you still had McGarrett, you still had Dano, but they modernized it a little bit. 
Um, you don't have, you know, detectives running around in suits, their hair never gets messed up, that kind of thing. They real people dealt with real problems, but it worked. Um, some of these shows, they do not work. Um, I don't really have a good example right now because technically, if it didn't work, I ain't watching it. So the but y'all know which ones I'm talking about. Y'all, everybody out there has their favorites, something they grew up with that may or may not have come back in one capacity or another. And and I get that. So I'm not trashing every show that's been remade. Now this Velma thing. That they they are being different for the sake of being different in every way that you can think of. And they're trying to point, placate to the younger generation and don't really care about the older generation. Yes, sir. You hit that on the head. All right, my brother. I survived my first full week without Raider football. Hey, so did I. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, but you know there's another week for y'all coming. At least one. So... As we get to the sports segment, let's divide it into two parts. Let's talk about what we saw in round one, Super Wild Card Weekend. Let's kind of start with the uh, Saturday games and, and roll forward. Uh, was there anything that stood out <clears throat> Saturday or Sunday that uh, you were like, whoa, I didn't see that coming or, hmm? Um, I didn't foresee the chargers building up such a big lead you know and then squandering it away like they did um and i didn't expect to see jacksonville play as bad as they did in the first half but i'm not surprised either um i was surprised with just overall all the games this weekend how high scoring they were i mean purdy on saturday for the niners he he played like a 10 year pro. I mean, he was making some decent, decent plays out there. Um, but you know, there was a lot of high scores this weekend, which really <clears throat> threw me off. I wasn't expecting that on Saturday or Sunday or last night for that part. Yeah. Um, what do they call Purdy? Big cock Brock. Hey, play on player, play on. Um, as far the other as, shoe will drop with him, though. He, it, the other well, shoe's going to drop. He's a rookie. It will eventually. It, it's, it's Cinderella is, is is about to hit midnight here in the next few weeks. It's going to hit midnight when they go to Philadelphia. I don't know. I, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, as far as the Chargers, I mean, we both picked Jacksonville. And the Chargers will be the Chargers eventually. As long as Staley has been there, yeah, what can I say? That That's their M.O. They make dumb decisions down <laughs> toward the end of the game. And I tell you, I tell you, as a Chiefs fan, I was mortified that come Monday morning, Staley was going to be fired. And then Peyton, Sean Peyton, was going to be hired <laughs> by the Chargers. That would have been the worst thing as a Chiefs fan that could have happened. Well, Staley did what most smart coaches do when they're on the hot seat. Fire Fired some, everybody uh, else. Yeah. <laughs> it's their fault. This should buy me I another seen year. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Uh, matter of fact, I believe they did that in Tampa this morning. Byron Leftwich was let go. He's a head coach, though. No, Byron Leftwich wasn't the head coach. He was the offensive coordinator. Who was the head coach? The head coach was... Uh, Todd Bowles. Thank You're you. Right. Thank you. Todd Bowles. Gotcha. So yeah. well, I mean, I wouldn't blame Leftwich for that debacle last night. I mean, Brady, Father Time, I think, has his arms getting ready to pull that full hug on Tom Brady. I know. And they'll they'll sign him in Vegas and we'll get an old decrepit quarterback and we'll be right where we are this time next year. Only we get the luxury of watching the Super Bowl being played in our own crib with two other teams. Neither of them are us. You know, I've heard that rumor more and more, and it's starting to make me, 
pause and and tap the brakes on my Brady to Miami thing. Miami's got their own problems right now. If Not you, really, if Brady. What do you do with Tua? You hold on to him, back up. You ain't got to get rid of him. You just have to rent Brady. You're renting Brady for a ring. That's all you're doing. That is true. Tua. Take this year and learn from the best. And unscramble. Get in his head. head. Get in his head and figure out what it is. Because, you know, Tua didn't play bad. He just. No, he they balled out. Yeah. They balled out until each time he hit his head. I mean, he had three total concussions this year. That's a lot for one year. <clears throat> so if I'm him. I welcome the year off. I hold the clipboard. If I'm him, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm. It's a wrap. I don't want to forget how to tie my shoes in a few years. Where am I? Oh, I'm on a <laughs> podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's talk about those people that are still in it. Buffalo scared me last week. But it was Miami. Yeah. I get that. Miami played them tough both times in the year. Now we got the Bengals rolling in the Orchard Park. This could get ugly. Division game, like I said last week, division games are so hard to pick, especially that third one. Yeah. And Buff or yeah, Buffalo could have completely throttled Miami. Um, especially they come out the gate looking like they were. And then it just... um, yeah, they did, but then Miami was making mistakes too, because I know that first play down the field to Waddle, he right in his mitts and he dropped it, you know. There was that would have been a huge of drops in that game. There were. And then, you know, and then of course Allen started doing what he does. He's he's a roller coaster quarterback. When he's on, he's really on. When he's off, he's really off. And I suspect them to bounce back this week. Um, I'm not picking them to win. Um, but I, I expect them to bounce back this week. I mean, if we're going to go ahead and throw our picks, I'll take Cincinnati. Um, I think they'll win. I'm rooting for Cincinnati because I would love that AFC Championship game to be in Arrowhead uh, versus Atlanta. But I, I, I'm i going with Buffalo. That's fair. I, I mean, I'm I, going with you, Buffalo. Here's the this thing, is a though. really a pick em game, though. If DeMar Hamlin shows up at the stadium, it's a wrap. Buffalo would have won that game. Nah. They're going to get fired up. They, they've been fired up. I, the the DeMar, riding the emotion of DeMar Hamlin is gone, in my mind. Just because they've played four quarters now, or eight quarters now, without him. Yes, they've talked to him. He's come in the locker room, dapped everybody up. It's a great feel-good story. Um. Now, if he was suiting up and playing, it'd be a whole different thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I think, yeah, <clears throat> even if he's in the stadium, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it it's going to be an emotional boost, but it's not like they're playing the Dolphins again. I mean, Cincinnati is a force to be dealt with. And, yeah. but, and but remember they that, are the returning this, champions, so you got to be This them. game, this matchup is where this whole thing started. I understand that. And Buffalo was on their way to getting their asses kicked. Cincinnati was about to go up 14 to three before that instance. So I, it was I, well I in way for Cincinnati to be walking away from them. Now, granted, that game was in Cincinnati. This was in Buffalo. So it's going to be a little different. I don't really care who wins. I'm just glad that one of them has to lose. Yeah. I mean, which would you rather have? Uh, and I know if Buffalo played you, it's in a neutral field. But we'll just take who that do I want? Equation. Who do you? Who want do that? I want as a fan? Who do I want? Who do you I want, want? Cincinnati. You want Cincinnati? I want Cincinnati. I want them bad. Be I want because them of the AFC bad. Championship game last year. Because of the last three games, 
I mean, they beat us and all that talking that they do. I want to shut them up. It's time for us to retake our spot in the AFC. So let's, let's go over there real quick. You got Jacksonville coming. Mm -hmm. Are you overlooking the Jaguars? Not at all. Uh, when we played Jacksonville earlier this year, Mahomes had three turnovers. Um, we were up pretty big, and then they started coming back. One by ten. So it's not like it was a close game, but, you know, Jacksonville did what they did. Difference is, is that we were able to put some drives together in the second half. And see, that's I feel this is going to be a little bit more competitive yeah. than – that i mean but we should win what's the what's the point spread do you know i do not know um we're gonna win I by four is four or Jacksonville five Jacksonville is one of those teams that's been coming back on teams all season mm -hmm. and i think they're just gonna run out of that gas you, you're but not also the teams that they're chiefs right and uh, exactly and the teams that they're coming back on don't have the best quarterback in the league i mean it's it's that's just what it is there's so, a different there's a different version of Mahomes in the playoffs. True. So Mahomes has say, never played a road playoff game ever. Until next weekend. No, nah, it'll still be an AFC championship. It'll still be in the arrowhead. If Buffalo doesn't win. No, it will. It'll be there because Buffalo won't be there. No, oh, okay. I, so we're we're in a different <clears throat> opinion there. I got Buffalo, you got Cincy, but we both got the Chiefs. Um mm -hmm. On the NFC side, the 49ers and the Cowboys, can we just sweep the 49ers under the rug right now? I mean, great. You beat Tampa Bay. San Francisco is going to dominate them. So we want to sweep the 49ers under the rug or the Cowboys? No, the Cowboys. The well, Cowboys you said 49ers. Are... Oh, I'm sorry. I meant the Cowboys. Um, You know what? The team that played last night could win the Super Bowl. That team. If they showed up and played like that, Weekend with that team, how they played last night, could win the Super Bowl. Off of those words, you just put a big smile on Jerry Jones's face if he's listening. I'm just saying they could win the Super Bowl, but they have to go through three teams that are still really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, you know, is Not this to the week? One of them's a division opponent. Exactly. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Two of them are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, is Purdy going to come back to the pack this week? I mean, I don't, I, I, this, this one intrigues me. This game really does. I'm picking San Francisco to win, but I would not be shocked or surprised if the Cowboys pull it off. I think the number one ranked defense in the league is going to give Dak Prescott fits. And, and and that's that's where I'm going to leave that. I'm going with Frisco. And that final I, like game, I said, I'm going with Frisco as well. But if Dallas plays like they played last night, it, it's it's going to be a barn burner. Philadelphia hosting the New York Football Giants. This game scares me because Philly is one of those teams that gets on a roll, and they've had a bye week. This is where the bye week can hurt you. I'm going to say up front that Philly's still going to win this game, but it's going to be a close game because Danny Dimes, he's playing like he thinks he's Eli Manning in those Super Bowl years. <laughs> uh, he played really well uh, last week against Minnesota. Yeah. He played really good. But upset alert. Upset alert. I'm picking the Giants Ooh. to pull off the upset. Again, so we've got uh, the Philadelphia two, Eagles. Two different ones that uh, we have a difference of opinion on. I'm going with the Eagles. You're going with the Giants on the AFC side. You're going with the Bengals. I'm going with the Bills. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. So you guys heard it here first. No cheating. Leave us a comment before Saturday and Sunday. Let us know who y'all think are going to win these games. <clears throat> I don't want you I, after the Eagles win. I don't want you saying I think Philly is going to. No, I can look at the timestamp. <laughs> I can look at the timestamp. All right. 
One more thing football related before we get out of here. And I know we got some time between now and the Super Bowl. This Pro Bowl thing, it's now flag football. Can we just get rid of the Pro Bowl? Can we? No, no. I mean, eventually no. they're going to be playing on Madden. They, they, the, the, the last, be the last few years, the Pro Bowl has been nothing but a glorified flag football game, anyway. Yeah. So now, so now, turn it into a flag football game. Mm. Professional athletes playing flag football. It's going to be fun. Well, simply because it's coached by the Manning brothers, it's going to be fun. You, you don't yeah, I mean, but that, even if it was coached by competitive, oh yeah, but even if it was coached by you know Michael Irvin and Deion Sanders, I mean, it yeah. would still be a blast, you know. Um, I think it's it's a welcome change to what we're used to, um, uh, and I think it's gonna make or not make, but it's gonna allow more players that actually got voted to the Pro Bowl to actually show up because a lot of the players got voted and wouldn't go. Just because they didn't want to get injured. Yeah. So I, you know, and then the I skills competitions, that. the skills competitions that they do, you know, I, I think it would be pretty neat. It it has the potential of being like the NBA All-Star weekend if they yeah. do it right. And I'm imagine, and I don't I'm pretty sure they're gonna do it, but a flag football game in Las Vegas in that stadium, that's gonna be wild on a full football field if they do the full football field. That'll be wild. It would have been nice to if Derek Carr got voted to the Pro Bowl so we could see him one last time in a Vegas jersey. <laughs> I just had to put that out there. Hit me again, Ike. You just want to keep getting punished, don't you? <laughs> I know. Eat the cake, anime. Eat the cake. <laughs> That's um, right. Hey, on the, on that note, just one more thing on him because we don't know when he'll be released or whatever. I am slowly coming around to the fact that the landscape of my team is changing. Nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to go with the flow and see what this summer has to offer. And that's all I'm going to say about that until until we get some major news. And if for some strange reason your team changes so much that you just can't stand it, I've got a bandwagon seat saved with your name on it for the Chiefs. Oh, Lord. Before I have this stroke, y'all, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. You know the deal. Love us. I'm Rick. He's Big Show. Take us on out of here. God bless y'all. Love each other. See you next week. Later.